Okay, in this section we're going to look at solving systems of nonlinear equations. So before we jump into that, I want to first show you a couple examples working with uh, linear ones. So this might be something more familiar to what you've seen in the past. So I just want to review the two different methods for solving these type of equations and then we'll, we'll go into the uh, nonlinear ones. For the uh, substitution method is the first method we'll look at. What this involves is you're going to take one of these equations, you're going to solve for one of the variables and plug it back into the other equation and basically we're eliminating one of the variables so we can solve for either x or y. Now it doesn't matter if you solve for x first or y first and it doesn't matter which equation that you look at. Uh, for substitution method you want to look for what variable is the easiest one to solve for. And If we look at the first equation here the y is going to be the easiest to solve for. The reason why is because if I solve for y, that doesn't involve dividing by something later, which means I can avoid uh, using fractions. So that's going to be a little bit easier to not have to worry about the fractions with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first equation and I'm going to solve for y. Okay, so if I solve for y, what I would do is I'm going to add y to both sides and subtract 11 from both sides. So basically switch two places of these two things here. Now if I solve for that, uh, I would get 3x minus 11. So again, I add the y over here, subtracted the 11. There's my uh, equation solved for y. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this and put it into the second equation. Now you don't want to use the first equation again because everything's going to cancel out. You want to use the second one. So since we know what the y is, you're going to take that and you're going to substitute it right there in the second equation for y. So it's going to look like this, negative 2x plus 5 times 3x minus 11. And then now what we've done is we've substituted and we've eliminated one of our variables. So now x is the only variable that's left. Now we can solve for it. Negative 2x plus 15x minus 55. We're going to distribute the 5 through the parentheses. And then we're going to add like terms together. 15 minus 2 is 13x. And then now we're going to add 55 to both sides of the equation. So if I add 55, you have 55 minus 16. Be careful with your signs. And you're going to get 13x is equal to uh, 39 when you subtract those. Divide both sides by 13. And then we get x is equal to 3. So that's our first answer. When you do these problems, you're looking for where two lines come together. So your answers are always going to be a set of coordinates. We found the x value, but now we have to find the y value. Now we already have this equation up here that's already solved for y. So because it is, I can just put 3 into this one in place of x. That's going to give me my, my y. So again, I start with 3x minus 11 was my original equation, the one I, did, I solved for earlier. And I'm going to put a 3 in there for x. So when I do, I get 9 minus 11, I get negative 2 as the y value. Now when you indicate your answer, you want to indicate your answer as a coordinate, as a point. So you would put 3 comma negative 2 and that would, what that represents is that would be the point of intersection. That's where if we, if we saw this drawn out, we graphed those, we would see the two lines coming together at this point right here at 3 and negative 2. Now graphing is actually another way that you could find answers to these solutions, but if the lines don't come together at nice integers like this, they come together at fractions, then it makes that graphing method a little bit harder. So that's why we're focusing more on the substitution method and elimination method, which we'll talk about next. Okay, now we're going to solve this one using the elimination method. Now, uh, the previous method we talked about was substitution, but substitution, you have to kind of have a y isolated by itself in order for that method to be more effective. This one, it would be difficult to solve for either x or y because uh, I would have fractions involved and it might make the problem a little bit harder. So we're going to do a different method instead, and this is elimination method. Elimination method involves multiplying one or possibly both equations by a number all the way through. We're going to add the equations together and you want to get one of the variables to drop out. We're eliminating one of the variables so we can solve for the remaining one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to choose to either eliminate the x's or the y's. It doesn't really matter which one you, you want to do. So, for instance, if I want to eliminate the x's, I would want to multiply this both things by something to where when I add the equations together, I'll get the x's to cancel. What you do is you look at the two numbers in front of the x's and you want to look at what's the least common multiple between those. In other words, what's the smallest number that both 3 and 5 will go into evenly? And that would be 15. So I want to make 
the, one of the x's 15x, but then I want to make another one negative 15x because when I add the equations together, I want to get one of them to cancel. So one will have to be applied with a negative and the other one will be applied with just a positive. So if I'm going to eliminate the x's, I'm going to multiply this equation through by negative 5 and I'm going to multiply this one through by 3. I'm purposely choosing this because I would get negative 15 and positive 15. Now if I wanted to put the negative down here instead and do positive 5 and negative 3, I could have done that also. But one of them has to be a negative. You don't want to make both of them negative because then that variable is not going to cancel out. So I would do that and by multiplying through I would get negative 15x, negative 20y, negative 5 and negative 11. Don't forget to multiply by the last one after the equal sign. That would equal positive 55. This one you get 15x plus 9y equals negative 33. You notice that when I take these equations and add them together, I'm going to get the x's to cancel. And so that would be a way to, to cancel out the x's. Now if I wanted to eliminate the y's instead, then I would have had to just multiply by two different things. So for instance, let's suppose we wanted to eliminate the y's. Well, I would multiply this one by negative 3 and this by a positive 4. And the reason why is because 4 times 3 is 12. I would make one of them negative 12 and one of them positive 12 add that together and cancel. So again, it doesn't matter if you eliminate the x's first or the y's because you've got to find both of them eventually anyway. So we've multiplied through, we've added this together, and now we notice that that's going to cancel out. Negative 20 plus 9, negative 11y. And then 55 minus 33, you'll get 22. And then we'll just divide both sides by negative 11 and we get our y value which is going to be negative 2. So now we have to find the x value. Now before with, with our substitution we already had an equation where the other variable was already solved for already. We don't have that case here. So you can choose to either use the first equation or the second equation. You're going to plug the y back into that. So let's use the first equation. 3x plus 4y equals negative 11. I'm going to put negative 2 in place of the y here and I'm going to solve that for x and that gets me my other answer. So 3x plus 4 times negative 2 is that 11. Keep in mind I could have used the second equation, would not have made a difference, I would have gotten the same answer. So 3x minus 8 equals negative 11. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. I get 3x is equal to negative 3 and then if I divide both sides by 3 I'll get negative 1 uh, as the answer. When you write your answer, remember that the x value has to come first. So you're going to write negative 1 comma negative 2. This right here would be the answer you would put for this problem. That would be the point of intersection between these two lines. Okay, this problem is another linear one and it says that we can solve using any method. So we can use either substitution or elimination that we've talked about in the previous examples. Uh, so for this one, we do have a choice on which one to do. We can either uh, choose to do it by substitution or we can do it by elimination. Now I'm going to do this one by uh, elimination. So what I do is I look at each of these and I want to see which variable I want to cancel out, either the x's or the y's. Last time we canceled out the x's first, this time let's cancel out the, the y's and we'll do that by elimination. I have a negative 1 in front of here and a negative 2 which means that 1 times 2 is 2 which means I want to make one positive 1 and one of them negative a positive 2 and negative 2 so that way when I add them together they're going to cancel. Now I already have a, a negative 2 down here so I'm not going to do anything with that one. I'm, for this one I only need to multiply the first equation and I'm going to multiply it by negative 2. So why a negative? Well because I already have a negative down here and if I do negative 2 times negative here it will give me a positive 2y so that way when I add the equations together I'll be able to get that to uh, cancel. So I'm going to multiply this through by negative 2, negative 6x plus 2y equals negative 8. So again, don't forget to multiply everything on both sides through by negative 2, including this number on the end there. Down below I get 6x minus 2y equals 7. I'm going to add that together and what happens is everything cancels out on this side. I get 0 equals negative 1. Now if you look at the notes, in the notes I did this one a different way and I got another false result. I got 8 equals 7 as a result. Well, 8 equals 7 and 0 equals negative 1, those are both false statements. So if you get any statement here that's false, that means that you're going to put no solution. What that means, uh, if we were to look at the graph, 
you would see that those lines would actually be uh, parallel. And if they're parallel, that means that the lines are actually never going to cross. So that's why the algebra doesn't work when you do that. You're going to get no solution because uh, they're end, they end up being parallel. Now, if you, if you get a result where you get two numbers are equal, 0 equals 0, or negative 1 equals negative 1, 7 equals 7, something like that, then that means that you actually have one line drawn on top of the other, and that would be a case where you'd have infinite solutions. So here's a case where you get no solution, but if you get like, again, separate problem here, if you, let's say you get 0 equals 0 as a result, then you would put here, this would be infinite solutions, because basically everything would cancel out on both sides, everything would cancel and you would get that. So this would be considered infinite solutions if you get a true statement. If you get a false statement, then it's always going to be no solution.